Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you episode 9 of my Agrarian Skies Hardcore Quest Let's Play. This game pack by Jaded Cat is available on the Feed the Beast launcher. First things first, you'll notice that the island has gotten a little bit of a facelift, and I'm building a bridge off to nowhere. Got a special project planned for over there. This was inspired by my partner, Apollo Cat, making me this lovely Purple Mentat skin. I've got my purple robes, my gold piping, and I've got these beautiful spice blue within blue eyes. Any fan of Frank Herbert's Dune should uh, be quite happy with this skin. I certainly am, as a giant, giant fan. In today's episode, I'm going to be completing a couple of quests where I left from where I left off last time. The Learn to Skyblock series. I need to complete the um, Cultivating the Harvest and Pastoral Life. I've already done one take and had a bit of a derp, so Cultivating the Harvest is completed in this book, and there's no way for me to undo that. However, I'm going to show you all the steps I went through to complete it. Also in this episode, I'm going to be um, getting started with more ore production. I need an awful lot of diamonds to be able to um, get started on applied energistics and handle my inventory issues. So I'm going to be setting up a whole new automated um, gravel production and gravel sieving operation in here. This is going to be eventually the ingot uh, creation area where all of my metals get created and smelted down. Over here is just an empty room at the moment. I'm going to be placing computers for applied energistics and um, inventory access, that sort of thing. Above this building with the elevators, these are really cool blocks. Let me show them to you really quick. Open block elevators are created with eight wool around one ender pearl. They can be dyed. I dyed these with uh, um, ink sacks after placing them in the world so that they would sh uh, show up. When you stand on one and jump, you'll get moved up to the next. And I think you can go 25 blocks that way. That's obnoxious. I love it. Up here, I'm going to have storage. Lots and lots and lots of barrels where I'm going to be pumping in all kinds of goodies. But that's in the long run. In the short run, let's get that harvester built up so that we can get the bucket of sludge and complete the quest. Well, I can show you how I completed cultivating the harvest. Um, ooh, but before that, I've been collecting some of the slime tree saplings. They grow, they make these slimy leaves, which make this really kind of gross noise when you crook them down. Slimy leaves drop slimy saplings and gelatinous slime. This blue gelatinous slime can be eaten if you're that kind of desperate. Um, and it can be used to create Tinker's Construct tools. I believe are the only two uses for it. However, the real um, benefit of this is to get the green slime from this center bit. You can break these um, congealed green slime blocks with anything. Um, there's no tool that makes it faster, and you can uncraft them. Well, you can put a congealed green slime block in a crafting grid and get four slime balls. You can also go the other way. Four slime balls turns into one congealed green slime. And these make really awesome tool handles. In fact, short of getting some really hard to uh, collect materials from the nether or getting really lucky uh, sifting a whole bunch of soul sand, you're going to need... Uh, um, these are going to be your best option for a tool handle from Ticker's Construct. So let me go empty out what I've got here. Slimy saplings, gelatinous slime, and slime balls. Um, speaking of soul sand, um, between last episode and now, I uh, created about half a stack of soul sand and sieved it up. And I found some nether wart, so I set up a tiny little nether wart farm here. And it... Just, you put down some soul sand, you put some nether wart on top, and it slowly grows all on its own. Nether wart can be um, composted in ex nihilo barrels. Ten nether wart will make one dirt, but there's much better options for creating dirt than that. So we're just going to keep storing it up. Alright, I need a bucket of sludge. To make a bucket of sludge, I, want, I need a harvester to collect plants for me. And every cycle of the harvester will generate a little bit of sludge. But why stop there? I'm actually going to make myself a little bit of a jungle tree farm here. And you'll notice that the jungle tree from last time is all cut down. I did not have to do any of that by hand. The harvester did all of it for me. So to start, I'm going to get myself a planter set down. I'm going to grab some 
jungle saplings. And I'm going to toss them in the planter. I'm going to keep one jungle sapling. And it has some power left over from the last time that I was working with it. So does the harvester and the sludge boiler. So it instantly planted those uh, saplings. A planter and a harvester can both affect a 3x3 area. The planter affects the, uh, three by, uh, the blocks directly above it. The harvester affects the blocks directly in front of it. So like that. So as you can see, there's energy left in it. I'm going to go grab some bone meal to show you how well this thing works. I'm going to need more than that. So I'm going to bone meal the center sapling here, which will grow a, tall, a big jungle tree. The harvester sees it and instantly starts gathering it. And you can see it's spewing out um, leaves and, I mean, spewing out vines and logs all over the place. It's just that fast at uh, cutting, cutting things down. Now, it's also going to shear the leaves when it gets up there, which will generate more saplings. I want the saplings to go down into the planter. To make that happen, I don't want you to connect there. I want to filter what goes into the planter, or it's going to try to shove whatever comes out into it. So I'm going to install a pneumatic servo, and I'm going to right-click the connection and whitelist jungle saplings. I like to use whitelist mode because you can say only this item goes in this inventory. And I'm going to put down and put that green stained clay back. And now when it gets to harvesting the leaves, saplings will go down there. I also want it to automatically deposit into these barrels here. Vines will go in there and wood will go in there. And I'm leaving the one last one open for saplings. That does pre present a bit of a problem. Oh, let me grab the slimy sapling. This inventory is closer than that one. And I believe that item ducts work such that it will fill up the closest inventory first before going for one further away. But you can set this to dense mode by right clicking on it, which will cause this to be the last inventory that is ever filled. You can also set this one to vacuum mode. So I believe that says that this is the first one that should be filled. I'm not 100% certain though. I haven't played with item uh, ducts as much as I should have. So you can see Cutting down that half stack of uh, vines and half stack of logs generated a little bit better than half of a bucket of sludge. If I want to get sludge out of this thing, I need to attach some fluid ducts. And it'll automatically output. Now, I'm going to set up a sludge boiler, boiler over here to process that sludge. But that's not the goal at the moment. And you can see this also has um, some power left in it. Right now, I need to get a bucket of the sludge. So I'm just going to move you... To there and I'm going to set up my um, reinforced portable tank. By the way, to make your reinforced portable tank, take a hardened tank and surround it with four hardened glass. Simple as that. Set down this reinforced portable tank right here and the sludge drains in. I'm almost there. Now I just need to power these things. Got myself uh, one of my, um, f it was full redstone energy cells. I've got another one in storage and I also have the four um, uh, ender generators, all full, ready, waiting for me to give them something to do. Oh, that's fluid duct. Get rid of that. I need my conduits, which I don't appear to have on hand. One moment while I find my conduits. Alright, got my conduits and slept through the night so that it would be nice and bright out here. So I'm going to supply this thing with energy by connecting just like that. And I need to set the left hand, oh, the left hand face is set to output. You are full of energy. Oh, it's not going to continue where it left off. That's weird. Let me break it and replace it. Maybe that'll help. I have to manually clear that out now. Okay, I'll be right back right, right after I get that uh, manually cleared out, and we can start this process over. Well, that was an adventure, but got it all cleaned out now. Two things of note to learn from this so that you don't have to repeat my pain. One, don't let the harvester run out of power before you've cleaned out a big tree. Two, make sure that this item duct is set to export, or things will get jammed and you'll spend 15 minutes trying to figure out why isn't anything working? So, show you how it all functions when it's all put together.
tree grows, harvester almost immediately starts cutting it down. Leaves go, uh, sorry, vines go in here, logs go in here. Saplings trail along down to the planter. Once the planter's filled up, saplings will go along into this better, uh, better barrel. It's using a pretty good clip of power, but it's also generating the sludge that we needed. Over seven buckets worth out of the two trees that have grown, one off camera and one just now. So there, grab a bucket of sludge, go to the quest book, open up your Cultivating the Harvest quest, and there would be a manual submit button for the sludge right down here. Now, out of the rewards, you get the Flux Infused Sickle, which I'll show you in just a moment, and a quarter of a heart guaranteed. You get a choice of Ender Lily Seeds, regular vanilla seeds, tomato seeds, and bean seeds. Ender Lily Seeds grow Ender Pearls. We've already got a really nice Ender Pearl farm, I don't want those. Wheat seeds, I have a ton. That leaves the choice really between tomato seeds and bean seeds. I decided to pick the tomato seeds because they can be used to help create two of the top level um, hunger craft foods, the feasts, whereas the bean seeds are not used in either of the feasts. So, got that all handed in. Now I can just leave this to run slowly. If I never need to, you know, get a boost of wood very quickly, I can just come over and bone meal something. There's a ton of bone bone meal available thanks to the um, monster farm over there. That is kind of beautiful. The harvester is a bit of a, you know, magic block. It does a lot, especially when you're using large trees like this. But th that's why it was balanced to require an awful lot of power in this particular pack. Now, the sludge boiler. That will actually do some very nice things for us. This block will turn that sludge into um, dirt, sand, peat, clay, occasionally soul sand. All you need to do is uh, whack this thing with a wrench so it'll start feeding the sludge in and make sure that it has enough power. And you want to stay a good ways away from it because while this thing's working, if you get too close, you get poisoned and you get hunger. Two rather nasty debuffs. So if you're careful, you can get close enough to the output chest. Oh, it produced some salt from Han uh, Pam's Harvest Craft. There's some sand. And I believe every bucket of sludge and every full work bar will produce one item. So that will, you know, make some useful stuff out of the sludge that's coming out of this. And gets me a nice functional tree farm and let me complete that quest. Fantastic. Moving on, there was one other uh, quest that I needed to complete from last time. Just going to get rid of this excess bone meal. I needed to make a squid spawn egg. And to make a squid, sp squid spawn egg, all I need is one chicken egg, and some string, and some sticks. So I need to make eight. No, last. There we are. I need eight fishing rods. I need that egg in the center, and then I need to surround it with the fishing rods. And unfortunately, because fishing rods cannot stack, you can't um, use NEI to shift click this recipe into place. There we go. One spawn squid egg. Now, if I check my book, the pastoral life is complete. I will take the center reward bag. I'll take the right hand reward bag. I get a single use safari net and a, uh, another quarter of a heart container. That was a good reward bag. Excellent. So, I'll just... Poor Squiddy. You will be fishing chips. Oh, no you won't be fishing chips. You will just be sad. And I'm going to get this deposited. See, this is why I really need to get that inventory management going. Because this is a mess. There we go. All the way at the end, of course. Got a flight potion here that I might end up using at some point in time. That could be useful. Came from uh, another one of the earlier quest rewards. I believe. Alright, so what are our next uh, options? We have expanding the farm, which can be done with um, by crafting a precis precision sledgehammer and a tin upgrade. What the upgrades do for um, Mine Factory Reloaded is they allow harvesters, planters, and all of the other blocks and machines in the um, pack to um, work on a larger area. Useful, but not a super big priority for me at the moment. 
and we must go deeper once. I need to craft an auto brewer. To craft an auto brewer. One, learn to spell. Two, I'm going to need a brewing stand. And for a brewing stand, I need a blaze rod. There's no real way to craft a blaze rod. Um, so you've got two options. You can invade the nether, which is terrifying in this pack and is not something that I'm going to be doing. Or you can use that fiery, I believe. Yeah, the angry doll that you got early on from one of the other quest rewards. Hopefully, I'll get lucky, get the drop that I need from it. I'm going to need my stone barrel, and I'm going to need a bucket full of lava. Take me back in there, go find my lava drum, grab some lava. All right, so you put the bucket, uh, you put the lava in the bucket, and you put the angry doll in the bucket of lava. Oh, disappeared. Where'd it go? Wait, what's going on here? Spewing fire all over the place? Give it a little bit of time to, you know, finish cooking up. And I should get one blaze out of this. Oh, there it is. Just took its sweet time. Alright. Ow. It dies. And I did not get a blaze rod. Well, that's going to complicate matters a little bit. So to make the angry doll, I need to make a precious doll and use some of the blaze powder, nether wart, glowstone, and redstone I've been getting. The precious doll, each one of them costs diamond or emerald, and I don't have a whole lot of either. In fact, I have exactly one more emerald. So I believe that the auto brewer is just going to have to wait until I have a better way of producing um, blazes to fight. But I can make the uh, tin upgrade and the precision sledgehammer fairly easily. First, let's check what we got in our goodie bag. We got some splash potions of harming, two flight fo potions, and a... Oh, t two splash potions of harming. Okay. I'm almost scared of what these flight potions actually do. I mean, it says light dot post fix flight four for eight minutes. I just, I don't trust it. I don't trust it at all rid of these actually they came from an earlier experiment with the flux infused sickle on the uh, slimy leaves here and the slimy leaves don't compost which is a terrible terrible shame okay I'm gonna go sleep through the night it's time to get diamond emerald and such production going more rapidly but first I want to grab I want to create a grassy area because I want sheep, I want cows, I want all of those passive mobs. To make grass, all you need to do is take grass seeds, right click on dirt, and I get a grass block. And that'll spread and uh, cover the entire area. All I need to do now is just leave it alone, be patient. Patience is difficult, but it's possible. So I'm going to grab the things that I need to start um, crushing up a bunch of gravel and sifting it to try to find as much uh, diamond and emerald as, and such as I can, so that I can make a good amount of blazes. Be right back. Alright folks, I'm back, and I think I have everything I need. I set up the ender generators and the, uh, the other redstone energy cell in here, so that I can start running some power lines around the island. Now this thing's only going to output 10,000 RF per tick along this line. However, that should that only is actually quite a lot. Should be enough to run pretty much everything I need for quite some time. I don't know of anything um, that takes a whole lot more than that, except for say the laser drill. And I'm running it in such a way like this because I can then later on uh, put everything underneath um, a the uh, panels and covers and such. For example, if I take these green stained clay covers, put it right there. You'd never know the difference without, well, without um, Wayla telling you that there's a difference. And I can come over to the crafting table and make myself a couple of uh, gravel road covers. I'm going to need, oh, oh, let's go with three um, blocks worth, which gets me 24 covers. So I'm going to be using these to 
pretty much run everywhere. And the textures connect still and it all works. You just need to make sure you don't accidentally block it off by placing one like that. Ooh, actually, that's supposed to be a gravel road still. And then I put gravel road back. And it's like I was never here, except now I've got this nice power line going underneath, which you can just barely see because of that border stone or Wayla telling you that these are covers and not the original. So, in the, in here, I've got myself six, igni six pulverizers and four igneous extruders, um, also my five autonomous activators and my oak sieve. I'm going to be using those to set up the whole uh, processing chain. Now, I don't need to power the igneous extruders, so those I'm actually just going to... Pick a spot. Oh, we'll put them up here. And because I'm just going to be producing um, cobblestone with them, I'm not going to need to feed them a continuous supply of anything. I'm going to make sure they're all set to cobblestone. They're all set to output on the bottom. I'm going to put a bucket of lava into each one. And as I get those fed, they will start to process. And I'll put this back later. So give me just a moment. I'm going to sort out exactly how I want to set uh, that whole chain up with all of the item ducts and such. All right, folks, we are back with everything mostly set up, and I'm going to explain what's going on here. So these four igneous extruders are going to output at the bottom and produce um, four cobblestone every 1.5 seconds. So I'm going to need six pneumatic servos to make all of this work, which I thought I had already crafted, but it turns out I only gathered materials to craft. There we go, six pneumatic servos, plus some cobble, some sand, and some gravel will allow me to whitelist what goes into each of these pulverizers. So, I'm going to get all of these installed. Now, each of the uh, pulverizers here is accepting in the top and outputting to the side. So, um, cobblestone go goes in the top, everything goes out the side. Cobblestone goes in the top, everything goes out the other side. This is the um, smallest profile I could figure out to set this whole thing up in the amount of time that I had. There's likely a more efficient way, but I don't know if you could do it along a 2D plane like this. You'd probably need to step it out one, one from the wall, which I didn't want to do. So we're going to set you to only allow cobblestone in there, and I'm going to do the same thing to two more of them. So those three will grind cobblestone into gravel. Now I'm going to set these two to only allow gravel, which means that, whoops, these two will be grinding gravel into sand. So we'll be producing one more gravel per pulverizer cycle than we'll be grinding into sand, which will end up uh, down here and sieved. Now I'm going to set this one to grind sand into dust. So we'll be producing one more uh, sand per pulverizer cycle, then we turn into dust, which will also end up down here. Now, the way these are set up, and I'm going to set this guy to dense mode so that uh, this will get filled last. So, what's going to happen? Cobblestone's going to come out of here, go into these three. Mm, you know what? I need one more servo because I need to blacklist cobblestone from the sieve. It's rare that I uh, end up using blacklist, but in this case, it's actually more useful. So I come down here, install one more servo, and blacklist cobblestone. So no cobblestone will ever go into that sieve, which will set up a barrel to collect the extra cobblestone later on. So what's going to happen? Cobblestone is going to come out of the igneous extruders, go into these three pulverizers. These three pulverizers will produce one cobble and... 10% um, of a sand, well, probabilities, etc., etc., every, I think it's 1.5 or 3 seconds, I'm not sure. Anyway, all of that uh, gravel will come out, two of it will go in here and one of it will go in there. These two will pound the gravel into sand, those two sand will come out, one will go in there, one will go in there, and we'll be producing every single possible sieved resource. And with the vacuum hopper directly over top of the sieve, it will instantly grab everything, pipe it out here, and toss it into this uh, little gold chest. The only thing that I'm not going to be sieving at the moment 
is Soul Sand, and I think you can sieve smooth, smooth Stone for a couple of mod items. Anyway, let's plug in the last item duck and see if it all works. I feel like I should be playing, uh, you know, March of the Machines right here. In fact, I'll see if I can find it uh, afterward and plug in some, uh, you know, royalty-free music to add to this. Because this is just cool. Gravel, uh, cobblestone goes in, gravel starts coming out. And it's going to fill up this one before it starts filling up this one. And this is going to get filled up before it uh, starts filling this one. Now the sand comes out. And it will fill this with sand before it starts going to the next. I'm going to speed things along a bit by giving it some extra... Oh! Alright, so these are all full. Now it's just a matter of watching the others fill. And the purpose of having it exactly like this, there are unique resources that come from sand, gravel, and dust. So I want all three of them to be sieving. Because dust gives me my redstone and my glowstone. Gravel gives me my gemstones. And sand is where I get, I believe, mostly seeds. So I could probably skip that step. But I figured just for complete completeness sake, I would stick that one in there as well. that to fill up. And I will be right back in a second once this is full and this one starts filling to show you how the entire system keeps working. Actually, change of plan. While that's working, I'm going to go get the uh, barrel setup that I'm going to need. So, you've seen the basic barrel from just another better barrel mod, or just another better, better barrel attempt. Now, part of the quest chain is and for the hoarding to make some structural upgrades and storage upgrades. Storage upgrades are made with pistons and barrels. You're going to use a lot of wood. Good thing I just set up a wood farm. And the structural upgrades, the first one is made just with wood. Second one takes iron. After that, it's gold. After that, it's diamond. Then a fluxed electrum, manulian. I still can't pronounce that, and Enderium. So they get quite expensive going up, but every upgrade allows for more storage. So what's going to happen here? So I'm going to grab oh, a couple of stacks of uh, logs so that I can show you the better barrel upgrades. All right, so I grabbed this barrel, full, mostly full of cobblestone. And you'd think that's not going to be very useful for uh, holding all of the extra that's going to be going into this. Tuck it right here. You can see the cobblestone should be starting to flow down that way. Yep, cobblestone's coming this way. It's going to start filling up the barrel, which is going to very quickly run out of room because there's already almost, it's already almost full. It can only hold about another 100 items or so. Oops, I actually wanted to check this guy's inventory. Sand and dust. All right, items are starting to flow in. Now, you can see it says structural level zero and upgrade slots zero. If I right click it with this upgrade, if I shift right click it with the upgrade, the structural level is now one and there's one upgrade slot. If I give it a storage upgrade by shift right clicking again, it now has zero uh, upgrade slots, but it can hold up to 128 stacks. And you can see that it's got one upgrade um, applied and one storage upgrade applied. Now let's say, I don't feel that 128 stacks is going to cut it, because I really don't. I want to go up one more, so I'm going to need fences, and I'm going to need iron, both of which I happen to have on hand. Well, I have the iron. I think I need to craft the fences, but I have wood. Lots and lots of wood. So I grab four more fences, and I make myself a structural upgrade mark two. If I take that mark two upgrade, And I shift right click on this barrel, changes color, becomes structural level two, upgrade slots, two of three. Every upgrade adds uh, that level of new upgrade slots. So if I add the third, I'd have six. Now I can shift right click with another one of these. And it shows that it can now uh, store up to 192 stacks or 12,288 cobblestone. That's good because I'm going to need an awful lot of co cobblestone to be uh, finishing off this map. All right, now, 
we've got um, pulverizers producing gravel, gravel pulverizing into sand, sand pulverizing into dust, and all of the excess is getting apply, uh, dumped into this autonomous activator. Ooh, this guy's actually going to fill up pretty quickly. We do not have nearly enough uh, autonomous activation going on over here to um, keep up with this amount of uh, resources. So what will probably end up happening later on is I will um, expand this, adding in another sieve table over here somewhere, which will leave this area up here. It's going to be a very tightly packed room, but it's going to leave this area up here for, uh, well, the special secret to the ingot uh, smelting. All right. Let me go check the time. Oh, and because we completed Storage Wars, get a full heart. I get to claim another reward bag. Got a basic reward bag. Keep that heart to get up to nine points. And we'll see what we got in the goodie bag. And a mostly empty chest. Drop off stuff. Goodie bag contained a whole bunch of backpack. Oh, woven backpacks at that. Uh, woven backpacks from forestry are pretty interesting. Um, they allow you to store a lot of stuff on hand. This, like, this has 45 slots worth of digger type stuff. For example, if I have this digger's backpack on my bar, I grab uh, the cobblestone falls. It gets picked up. It goes straight into the digger's backpack. Um, I can shift right click to lock it so that when I pick it up, it goes into my inventory. I can do it again to um, set it into receiving mode. Um, when it's in receiving mode, it will pick up items. It, they go straight into there, and if I were to right-click on an inventory with it, hmm, nothing happens. If I shift right-click, yes, if I shift right-click on an inventory with it, it grabs a stack out of that inventory. I don't know if it's supposed to grab all of it at once, or if the stack is intentional, or if it's just an issue with the barrel. If I shift right-click again, it's in resupply mode. Now, in resupply mode, I can keep one stack of cobble on my bar, and every time I place it down, it resupplies with one. And if I need to break that cobble, it goes into the backpack instead of into my inventory. So I will always have a full stack of cobblestone on my bar until I run out of uh, cobble in the digger's backpack. And then I can also right... Oops. So you can see I've got... Uh, that's 9, 18, 20 stacks of cobble in the inventory right now. If I right-click on it on the barrel, well, shift right-click, it completely empties the inventory into the barrel. So I can shift right-click to take stuff out when it's in um, receiving mode. And if I put it into resupply mode, I can shift right-click to completely empty into the uh, inventory. I'm not going to be making a lot of use of the backpacks on this series. They're much more useful when you're out and about... Uh, mining and adventuring and you know find a village or something and you need all that in extra inventory space i mostly need a tool bag which there's another mo uh, modded bag that will be much more useful for that all right i think that's going to just about wrap us up for today didn't get quite as far as i wanted to but i got the setup started next time i'm going to be taking all of these sifted uh, resources and setting up a system to automatically turn them into ingots. And that's going to be a pretty fun uh, exercise. I'm going to be using these smelteries that I have set up in advance, and I'm going to be uh, feeding the molten metal through these fluid ducts and automatically turning it all into blocks that get turned into ingots. It'll be a good time. So thank you very much for joining me. If you're enjoying the series so far, please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time.